we put the money together for Sleeping Dogs in 1976. I got to go to the uh, Cannes Film Festival in 1978 with Roger and Ian um, to try and market the film. I thought, well, um, this looks like more fun than being a lawyer in a bank. I left in December 1979 and basically turned up at Roger's door and said, I come to make films with you. After we finished Smash Palace and went to the Cannes Film Festival with it, I spent quite a bit of time in um, late 81, early 82 on the marketing trail with Smash Palace. And the Film Commission came into being in 1978, so um, when I left Broadbank, uh, in actual fact, the first thing that happened was the Film Commission paid for me to come down to Wellington um, and, uh, and have a chat with me about what I wanted to do. I had three or four projects that, at various stages. I had Constance with Bruce Morrison and Pallet on the Floor and Came a Hot Friday, which I was working with Ian Mune on. Now, I wasn't one of, you know, like Jeff or Ian... Um, or Bruno, who had come up through, you know, the creative culture of New Zealand in, in the late 60s, early 70s. And in the period after September 84, I had a, a, a business partner, a, a wealthy American, who helped me get some films made. Um, and Bill Gavin, actually. Um, Bill Gavin, who was living in the UK at the time, um, and we did... Bridge to Nowhere, Queen City Rocker, Starlight Hotel, which was fully funded by the Film Commission. I spent 12 months working on Air Tipu Air the, the, the Māori drama series that um, was funded by the Film Commission and, or the Short Film Fund and uh, TVNZ, I think, and through the Demanuka Trust. And we made five half hour dramas and all Māori crew and cast except for the three DOPs, which was pretty amazing really. If you have a look at who worked on that series and who uh, they are in the industry today and what they're doing, we had a, an amazingly high success rate for people who had never worked in the industry before essentially. It's a pity we didn't do more. I was head of um, production at Avalon looking after, you know, all of the programming that was produced at Avalon, like Fair Go, Crime Watch, Country Calendar. Um, the day I started, there was a meeting in the uh, cafeteria, and essentially I was told, we know what you're here for. You're the hatchet man who's been brought in to, you know, close us down. And I said, well, you know, that's not what I'm here for. I'm here to, you know, to make programs. I've just finished working at Māori Television and what I, I enjoy is working with somebody who um, I don't have to tell them something twice but also who doesn't actually just take what I say as gospel. For instance, if I say um, I don't think that scene works because I think you know, uh, that character wouldn't do this in that scene. I think, you know, you need to find what that character would do in the scene. And then they say to me, oh no, they would do that because this is the backstory. And and, 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 and if I believe them, you know, I say, ah, oh, okay, gotcha. You know, yep, cool. But if they say no and, um, and ultimately, well, I'm the writer and that's what I want them to do, or I'm the director and that's what I want them to do, um, I just sort of, oh yeah. The doors on Kahukurika were closed in May 2002. I look back and I say, say to myself, well, yes, there are things that I might have done differently, but, you know, that's looking back with hindsight and um, the reality is, you know, those I made the decisions and I'm still comfortable with the decisions I made back then with the information and knowledge I had back then. I, I did spend quite a bit of time uh, in purgatory uh, between May 2002 and starting work at Mighty Television in 2005. Um, uh, and I, but I did some interesting little things. I spent some time uh, working with a friend of mine in Fiji on a number of things. and uh, I worked with Taika on Two Cars, One Night. 
And the other thing I was doing was finishing Fracture, which was a drawn out process. Uh, and then early 2005, I started work at Māori Television. And that's what I've been doing for the last three or four years. I got a position to be head of programming. And um, and I think, you know, was able to have some influence over the way things were, uh, you know, the things that happened that um, it's been positive for Māori Television. Um, we did Anzac Day and when I look back at the films that I've made and I s suspect that, you know, um, Came a Hot Friday is the most important and satisfying film to, that I've probably made, you know. One, because of the, the public appreciation of it and two, because it was such an enjoyable experience. And um, But then when you, you, you know, I, I think there are some other things that I've done, like Etipuere was very satisfying and influential and important. And, but ultimately when I, if I look back on my, um, the things I've done in my life, probably Anzac Day 2006 is the most important thing I've done um, because its impact on our political and social landscape uh, was enormous and, and probably more than anything else um, has ensured Māori Television's place in our broadcasting landscape, really. Look at how much Māori now is on mainstream television and at how it's growing. Um, you know, that is singularly as a result of the success of Māori Television, that people are saying, ah, oh, we can't say you can't have Māori Television in prime time, uh, um, Māori language in prime time anymore because, hey, it works, you know. There is some sorting out to do in the broadcasting landscape. It's quite clear that TVNZ have signalled um, that they want to be the Māori broadcaster. And, and to some extent, you know, there is a logic to it. Essentially, you know, they have um, a, a, a free view multiplex and, and they could argue to a government you don't need to have a separate Māori television station. We can give you two Māori channels on our Freeview multiplex. It wouldn't be a smart thing for them to do, for the, any government to do. Not just because there is incredible affection and goodwill uh, that has been created around Māori television, um, because TVNZ is a leopard that will not change its spots. 1.6 million people tune into Māori television every month. What I think that represents is there is a much bigger receptive audience and that's that to me is what Māori television has done. That's the, the, its biggest achievement is to create a, a receptive audience. Oh, make a difference. <laughs> um, I think there's two things that um, that I can contribute to. I think that there needs to be some thinking done around what is um, what is the end game in terms of it all. Just imagine what sort of country New Zealand would be if everybody had grown up since 1840, learning both languages. You know, we'd be unstoppable. And um, unfortunately, it didn't happen. But, OK, so let's make it a goal for 200 years after the signing of the treaty that we're a bilingual country. Can it be achieved in that time? Um, I think so.